I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order, regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of Texas Southmost College District. Uh, members present are uh, David Oliveira, this is Dolly Zimmerman, Dr. Roberto Robles, uh, Roman Dino Esparza, and of course our president, Dr. Garcia. Uh, at this time, the board will convene into executive session as provided by Government Code Chapter 551. We will not be long. We will be out very, very quickly. So with that. I'm going to reconvene to a regular meeting. Um, the, we'll act on items for consideration that were discussed in executive session. We do have one item. And that is the purchase of a condominium unit at Fort Brown VS Phase 1. Uh, we do would ask for a motion to approve the contract and resolution for the purchase of Fort Brown VS Phase 1, Unit 1016. So moved. We have a motion by uh, Dr. Robles, second by Mrs. Zimmerman. All those in favor? Aye. Indicate by saying aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Uh, now we move on to the administration of oath of office, but before I kind of get on, I, I want to say one thing real quickly. Two of our board members of our trustees are not present here today. Both of them uh, express much regret, uh, Dino, David, uh, all of the members that are gathered here today. And uh, uh, Chester, for example, I think this is the first board meeting he's missed in 15 years. So uh, payback is going to be real big, guys. Uh, <laughs> But both of them uh, uh, certainly express their congratulations and deep regret for not being here. And, and we will have them for, for the balance of all our business throughout the, the year. So um, at our previous meeting, we declared the results of the May 13th trustee election. The members elected were Mr. Roman Dino Esparza, place one, Dr. Roberto Robles, place six, and David G. Oliveira, place seven. Um, after the oaths have um, uh, well, let me, let me back up a little bit here. Uh, Mr. Oliveira will be sworn in by the Honorable Judge Migdalia Lopez. Uh, Mr. Esparza will be sworn in by the Honorable Ignacio Tortella III. And Dr. Robles will have his swearing in at, our, at the board meeting in August. And he will be sworn in by the Honorable Judge uh, Hilda G. Tagli. Uh, after the administration of the oaths of office, uh, we will proceed to the Rose Garden for a brief reception. That should take us 30, 35 minutes, and then we will convene back to conduct our business. So with that, I will ask Judge uh, Lopez to please come forward and to administer the oath of office to Mr. Oliveira. and really all the board members and the president of the board and all the other people that work uh, to make this institution a great institution. You know, there's a lot of our people that can't afford to go away 
college. And here they have a great college, a great university that's going to be meeting their needs. And as I see all the expansion, when I went to the Sonoma Diet, I saw all that new section over there, and then we got the, the old mall. I mean, I think the college is doing great. And that's because of the leadership of the people, two of the people that we're swearing in, as well as all the other board members. Because, you know, you don't get paid for this, uh, to do this job. Uh, people that would ask me when I was on the school board, how much you get paid? I said, zero. <laughs> so, you know, this a lot of it is volunteering their time. And, of course, that means that their family then doesn't get to be with them as much. But see, you know, your dad is providing for your future. And not only your future, but the whole community, all Cameron County and South Texas. So with that, I'd like to swear in David Olivetta. Please raise your right hand. Aye. Your name. <laughs> you solemnly swear. You solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute. Uh, that I will faithfully execute the duties of trustee. The duties of trustee of Texas Southmost College. College. Of Texas Southmost College. District Place Seven. District Place Seven. Of the State of Texas. Of the State of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution. And the, laws of the United States, and the laws of the United States, and of this state. And of this state. So, help so help me God. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I will now ask uh, Mr. Tortella to come forward and administer the oath of office to Mr. Esparza. So when he called me and asked me if I would do this, uh, I was humbled. It's a very special occasion for me because, number one, it's my first swearing game. I've never done one. I won't do one again, <laughs> but, 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 but I'm here. Um, Dean and I have known each other, most of you know, since high school. Um, we parted ways. He went off to college. So did I. Um, I didn't agree with the choice of college he made, but he finally, <laughs> he finally joined me in law school. And many nights we stayed up talking about how we would come back to the community, make a difference. and. To me, it's very special that, in fact, you know, Dino has made that the choice. He has made that commitment. He had a lot of choices to go to other places, and he chose to come back to Brownsville. The fact that he's a part of the university, and as Judge Lopez mentioned, the bond election, which is a very important election that was passed by a great majority of our citizens, uh, the board members have entrusted Dino to oversee that project, and I think that speaks very highly of, of Dino. And for, again, it's an honor for me to be here uh, today. And with that, I'll, I'll, I'll ask 
Dino to raise his right hand. Aye. Aye. State. Do, Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of trustee of the Texas Southmost College District, place one of the state of Texas, and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state. So help me God. Ah, okay. 
Uh, Let me tell everybody. Right. If you all would uh, go ahead and join us outside for a short reception, we're going to take a couple of photographs, like after a wedding, and uh, but we'll we'll join you in about uh, three minutes, right outside in the rose garden. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and resume. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, uh, the regular meeting of May twenty second. Everybody's had an opportunity to view the minutes. A motion to approve by Mr. Oliveira. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, Mrs. Zimmerman. Any questions, comments? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Um, next item is speakers to the agenda and public discussion. Do we have any speakers? Board briefing. Uh, this board briefing will be the uh, Sable Palms writing project. And Dr. Raglan, Ruth Ann, will you? introduce this item. Mr. Chairman, board members, and Dr. Garcia, it's my pleasure to introduce to you this evening a faculty member who's been with us for just two years who already is deeply committed to a program that helps our public school teachers become better writing teachers. Dr. Lyon Rathman is a director of our Sable Palms Writing Project, and he has brought with him two Sable Palms Fellows whom he will introduce to you. Dr. Rathman is an assistant professor in the English department, and he received his bachelor's degree in history from University of California at Berkeley, his master's degree in American history from San Francisco State, and his PhD in rhetoric from University of California at Berkeley. His dissertation topic was the representation of Mexico and the transformation of American political culture from 1787 to 1848. It's interesting that the National Writing Project originated at University of California at Berkeley, which is his alma mater, and now he's director of that program here at UTV TSE. So, comes back around. Thank you very much for that introduction. The Sable Palms Writing Project is dedicated to helping local teachers improve their teaching and progress in their professional lives. And the most eloquent way that I could possibly demonstrate the mission of, of the project is to share this presentation with two members of the, of the Sable Palms project, two local teachers who have participated, who have gone through the project, and, and who are currently helping us run many of our programs. So to help me with this uh, presentation is, is Monica Araiza. Uh, who is a seventh grade teacher at Juliet Garcia Middle School, uh, and Angie Fuentes, who is uh, teaching developmental reading here at the general in the general in the School of General Studies. Um, and I have been uh, with the writing project. Can you hear me without without the microphone? Okay. Um, I have been with the writing project for 20 years. And it's an incredible privilege to actually be directing uh, a site of the, of the writing project. Um, let me just uh, briefly tell you what the, the writing project is. The writing project was started by a professor of education at UC Berkeley back in 1974. And it, it started with one site at the university, uh, and it's spread since 1974. Across the country, there are now 185 sites in all 50 states. And we are one, the Sable Palms is, is one of the sites of the National Project. And the, the National Writing Project is, is dedicated to two basic principles. The idea that teachers of writing need to write themselves, and that the best teachers of teachers are other teachers. The, the basic model of the writing project, the basic motto is teaching teachers, teaching teachers. And so it's a, it's a grassroots, bottom-up model of, of professional development. Um, Sable Palms is one of 12 sites of the National Writing Project here in Texas. And it involves a collaboration between UTB, TSC, 
uh, the national office of the, of the writing project and local school districts. And we have an especially strong relationship with BISD. Uh, but we also have worked with other school districts. But uh, thus far in our history, we've primarily worked with, with BISD. Um, and what we do is offer professional development to local teachers. And we strive to improve uh, writing instruction in the classroom. Uh, we strive to empower teachers of writing, of, of writing to write themselves. Uh, we examine research-based best practices and, and try to uh, promote best practices in the classroom. Uh, and then we also encourage and, and create a forum uh, for uh, not just encouraging, but for creating collegiality among educators uh, across the grades, from the university down to kindergarten. Um, the basic components of the writing project, or the, of the Sable Palms writing project, are the, the Summer Institute, in which we train uh, 20 to 25 teachers in a very intensive four week long, actually five week long uh, summer institute. Um, we conduct in-service uh, programs that last throughout the year. Uh, we have continuity programs that give graduates of the summer institute an opportunity to get together, uh, to share research, to share writing, to share classroom techniques. Um, and then we also uh, initiate uh, community programs, uh, such as um, family literacy nights. Uh, and then we also uh, conduct uh, classroom research in a variety of, of forms. Uh, and so to, to tell you about uh, our recent uh, initiatives is Angie Fuentes. Hello, good evening. My name is Angie Fuentes. Um, being part of Sable Palms has aided, enabled me to grow professionally and personally. Personally in the sense that I wasn't the best writer, so it sparks that in, yourself, in myself. Professionally, I teach developmental students here on campus, so I use a lot of the techniques we learned in Sable Palms to incorporate that in my classroom, and that's helped them become better writers and readers and so forth. Um, some highlights with Sable Palms Writing Project with our local schools. To introduce Sable Palms to the district, we, in 1999, we had a district-wide conference where over 400 participants um, participated. Uh, in 2000, we had another district-wide conference, Reimagining Writing. Again, all our conferences revolve around the fact that writer, teachers need to be writers themselves, and of course, all the people who present are teachers themselves, so it's very relevant. 2001, we had a mini conference for English language learners um, in which over 100 participants um, gathered and, of course, teaching, they focused on teaching of English language arts. Building capacity. Up to this year, 2006, we will have over 144 teachers from local districts, not just BISD, but local districts who participate in Sable Palms. Um, next, we will have Monica Araiza, and she will tell you what we are working on at this moment, this summer. Good evening. Um, actually, in the last year, uh, we have had several initiatives that have been successful. Uh, including a presentation by pre several presentations by authors, South Texas authors, including uh, Rene Saldana from Edinburgh and Carlos Flores from Laredo. Um, there have uh, we've also conducted technology workshops, um, specifically you, the development of digital storytelling using Microsoft Movie Maker, and we have um, developed that over the last year. Uh, most recently. On June 1st, we had our very first Celebrate Stories, which was exactly that, a celebration of stories written by local teachers and students all the way from elementary through um, high school. And this summer, we currently have the Institute taking place 
and it will be concluding next week. It ta is taking place at Rivera High School at the moment. Um, there is a new teacher institute that is also taking place this week. This week as well, we have the Tech Matters Institute where we're training teachers how to use technology such as uh, Microsoft Movie Maker again, um, building web pages and creating web quests. Uh, we are also having three young writers camps, one for elementary, one for middle, and one for high school. And those writing camps will um, take place over a one to two week period this summer. And we're working on a professional development conference for in this August, and that conference will be unique in that teachers will be the facilitators and the presenters, teaching other teachers best practices and uh, methods that have been successful for them in the classroom. And since participating in the Institute last summer, I have been significantly impacted by the writing project. I ha it has helped me, it has helped me develop a network of teachers locally, statewide, and nationally, nationally um, from whom I have learned wonderful techniques that I've taken back to the classroom. And I have seen the, in the environment and the atmosphere in my classroom change um, in such a positive way that my students are taking more pride in their writing and enjoy writing and it, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience uh, for me and for my students. And so, um, you know, it, it really has been um, very impactful. Okay. So, I guess at this point, any questions? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I would like to congratulate all of you for a wonderful project. Somewhere along the line, some, someone uh, put some CDs in my hands Real where I put in, in the, uh, put them in my car, and I've listened on long trips to the stories of children reading their, their writing project. And it's so beautiful and almost uh, to hear them uh, express themselves uh, with words that are culturally relevant to them at that moment. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, does not include only children that are from here, but also from Mexico, Appalachia, Oregon, uh, I mean, all parts of the United States. And, and they express themselves so beautifully. And the, the back, I like the background music mm -hmm. that you all put in. I don't know how you all do it, but you do <laughs> fantastic production. And I would, I would uh, encourage all of you to try and get some of these CDs, and whenever you get in, in the vehicle and you go on a long trip, just relax, put one of those CDs in there, and listen to those stories. And some of them have actually made my, my eyes watery. So I, they're, they're wonderful stories. I want to congratulate you. Uh, do you have a website? How do you know, you know if other for other kids that want to get involved and they want to write. Uh, also, are you, um, I know you're involved with BISD, but are you also uh, looking to getting involved with uh, the uh, like parochial schools uh, locally? That's, that's something that we're starting to do is, is to work with the, the private schools in the area as well. Um, and we're, we're trying to expand our programs, the, the Rural Voices initiative was very successful, and we'd like to, to do more of that. And I'm very gratified that you enjoyed that. Very much so. Thank you. I have one short story to tell about the, uh, the writing project. I was in, uh, in Mass one day. This is not said to brag about being at Mass, but <laughs> I just happened to be at Mass, and I had, I had just knelt down. And, and uh, I had somebody tap me on the shoulder. So I turned around and this young lady, much like yourselves, said to me, I, I know you're trying to pray, but <laughs> if I don't say this to you right now, I won't see you again. And I said, yes. And she said, I uh, am a um, recipient of the tools, is the term she used, that I have received from the Sabal Palm, uh, uh, Palms reading, uh, writing project. And this happened to me last summer, she said, and I have used those tools now to teach my students. Before I went there, I felt so 
um, ill-prepared to help them and frustrated. I'm sure they were frustrated too. And this is all in mass, okay? And, and she goes, but now I have, I'm empowered. She said, I have the tools and I can help them. And it feels so good. Thank you very much. So it's a very real impact on, on teachers who all went into this profession to be the great teacher that we all had ourselves. Uh, and it's great impact on the students uh, that are the recipients of it. So muchas gracias to all of you. And thank you, Professor, for joining okay. us in this important work. Professor and uh, Angie and Monica, it's, it's apparent. I mean, I think any program is always as successful as the people who are entrusted to lead it. And just by listening to you today, the dedication, the passion, the professionalism, um, uh, as Dr. Robles said, you know, the stories inspire us, but the inspiration probably to your students comes and it's apparent that it comes from your passion and dedication. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Business Affairs Partnership Committee meeting. There was three items. Uh, taken up by the uh, Business Affairs Partnership Committee. The first item was the TSC budget for fiscal year 2006-2007. And on that report, I will ask Dr. Moore to uh, present that, uh, provide a brief uh, presentation. Now, we've had an opportunity to, to review the budget. Uh, I, I would like to say that at the previous two uh, committee meetings. We, we did have uh, members of, of the Board of Trustees attend. Dr. Robles has attended. Uh, Mrs. Zimmerman has attended. Um, uh, Mr. Esparza, our chairman, has attended. So, uh, you know, what you're going to see and what you have in your budget is essentially is what we reviewed at the last board meeting and what we reviewed at the committee meeting. So, with that, Dr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Campirano. Uh, as Mr. Campirano said, this is the second uh, reading of the uh, Texas Southmost College budget for fiscal year 2007. Uh, the uh, 2007, FY 2007 budget will provide for the needs of the institution and the partnership by providing instructional services in partnership with UTB, TSC, with UTB uh, tuition scholarships, capital improvements, maintenance of the campus, campus expansion for the growing enrollment, and construction of bond projects. Just as a reminder, uh, the, from this chart, uh, you can see that significant amount of money uh, moved from Texas Southmost College to instructional services at UTB TSC Partnership, $42 million. Uh, that's approximately uh, 79% uh, of the operating budget. Uh, the $16 million that you see at the bottom is separate from that, and that is for those capital expenditures associated with the bond proceeds that we'll be expending this next year. The operating revenues come primarily, 82% of them, about $8.9 million from taxes. The next largest percentage from the building lease that comes from UTB for using the facilities that Texas Southwest College owns. Auxiliary enterprises and interest incomes uh, provide the uh, smaller amounts of those operating revenues. Those operating revenues obviously do not contain the amount that goes over to UTB. The operating expenses for the next year, I think it's important to point out that a significant portion, 30%, go for scholarships for tuition. That's the money that TSC supplements the uh, tuition payments that students make to the University of Texas Brownsville tuition. So that's a, a significant contribution that lowers the cost for community college students going uh, to the partnership, district students. Instructional support. Uh, campus facilities and additional commitments and auxiliary fund comprise the rest of those expenditures. And after that brief summary, and again, we remind you that we went through this in detail at two business affairs partnership committees, which most of you attended. 
uh, we do provide those necessary services and necessary uh, needs uh, with this budget for the next year. This budget does not anticipate an increase in the maintenance and operation taxes, and it does honor the uh, three point, in our projections, honors the 3.8 cents limit that the board itself established and promised the voters it would not exceed with respect to uh, the uh, uh, bond tax bonds that the voters approved. So with that, uh, 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 we recommend, and uh, uh, Mr. Campirano, I think you were the, at, the board, at the BAPC meeting, you may want to uh, is any any questions on the budget from anyone? Okay. Okay. Um, the uh, the committee recommend recommends to this board, and, and I would move that we approve the TSC district budget for fiscal year 2006 2007 as presented. Second the motion. We have a second. No discussion. All those in favor, and by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Moore. Uh, the second item for consideration by the committee was the um, um, change order for the contract for the abatement of vacant buildings. Uh, as you recall, this is for the demolition of what was the uh, Peninsula property, the old uh, Ramada Inn uh, facility. Uh, during the course of, of undertaking the, the demolition and removal of materials, there was additional removal and disposal of black mastic uh, located behind the mirrors. And for the additions, uh, and, and to remove this uh, material, uh, it, it did require uh, having to comply with additional state requirements for its removal and disposal. So with that, there was a change order to the contract of $19,914.12. Now, the uh, project has been completed. Uh, this would essentially be uh, closing out the project. And uh, the committee did recommend, and, and I would move to approve the change order for the contract for abatement of vacant buildings in the amount of $19,914.12 as presented. I'll second the motion. We have a second. We have any questions, discussion? All those in favor by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. And the last item for consideration by the committee was uh, action on the TSC budget amendments for the current fiscal year. Uh, two amendments were presented. You have those in, in your package. Um, the first amendment was essentially adjusting a line item uh, for uh, contract fees uh, by an addition of $4,000 and that will come out of the contingency line item. This does not affect the fund balance of the general fund. And the second budget amendment was for an addition of $100,000 to the property acquisition. Again, uh, this is a straight line item adjustment. Uh, it would still leave a balance of $793,299. In the budget uh, as a fund balance for campus facilities. Uh, pretty straightforward budget amendments. Uh, the committee recommends, and I would move to accept the TSC budget fiscal year 2005 2006 budget amendments numbers 06009 and 06010 as presented. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is um, acceptance of a <coughs> sculpture donation. Uh, Dr. Garcia. I'd like to uh, remind the board that it was just a few months ago that that we were celebrating Charo Days um, in our community. And as a result of that, uh, Mr. Amigo, Mr. Sergio Bustamante, came to our community. And I think Dr. Robles was instrumental in, in uh, the selection of Mr. Bustamante as, uh, as the artist that would be honored. Well, it was uh, during those days that he was here that we hosted Mr. Amigo on campus, as we normally do. We had a reception and a program for him at Jacob Brown. And that day I pulled out every Bustamante piece of jewelry I had and put it on and, and went over to the reception and, and was honored to sit next to Mr. Bustamante on one side 
and the, the Mexican consul on the other. In that process, I, I said, you know, while you were, it's wonderful that you honor us by being here, but would you honor us again by coming back and giving a full day of, of uh, lectures to our students and to students in the community? And, uh, and I was shy even about making that request, and he said, I would be pleased to do that, and I commit to you today that I will come back and do that on your campus. So the consul was hearing the conversation. He said, oh, but you should be asking for much more. You should ask for a sculpture. And, and I know you've uh, been concerned that the campus does not have art. And so I, I think uh, that Don um, Sergio Bustamante ought to think about the giving us one. And so he got up to the microphone and challenged Sergio Bustamante in public to consider giving us one of his sculptures. Well, a gracious gentleman then, Mr. Bustamante, uh, took uh, the, the, the mic after our consul and said it would be his honor to, to send us a sculpture. It, it is a dream come true for this university to have uh, uh, Don Sergio Bustamante honor us in this way. And so a few weeks ago, we were notified that uh, we are about to, to re that we are now the recipients of this grand sculpture. Now, Dr. Moore has details about uh, uh, the transaction. Uh, the, the short version is that uh, we'll be responsible for transporting it up here. It is a very large uh, sculpture. I forget the exact dimensions. Three by three. But is it three by three? Yes, ma'am. Three by three. It is going to be uh, uh, wonderful. Uh, we'll be once we get it on our campus, then we'll be coming to you with suggested sites uh, for it, uh, and uh, and we hope that it, it begins a uh, culture of donating important pieces of art like this to the university, because we're not going to have money in our budgets to be able to do that. And, and we're very dependent on the, on the generous nature of, of those who would support us. Uh, in addition to this, uh, Mr. Bustamante had a third request that day. And the third request came from what your, one of your fellow board members, and that was Rosemary Breedlove, who approached him about designing a signature scorpion pin for our university to use. And he has agreed to do that. And so he, we will be, I think, the only university with a designer mascot pin, in this case, a scorpion pin. And so at some point, uh, we'll be traveling. He asked us to, to, to go to uh, his taller, which is in uh, Tlaquepaque, Jalisco, Mexico. And uh, so it just may be that we have to go and pick up the sculpture and, and help, uh, help him be inspired to, uh, to then produce this designer pin. But we are very, very thrilled at, um, at, at receiving this and would like to recommend your acceptance of it this evening. So, Dr. Robles, I would uh, uh, ask all of you to consider this uh, today. And I, Mr. Bustamante is a world-renowned uh, uh, artist. And his, his uh, works can be found in, in anywhere from Brownsville, Texas, to Tokyo, Japan. So I think we're honored to, uh, by him giving this to the university and the college. And uh, so I move that we accept this for the college second. and the university. Okay. Do you have a motion? And we do have a second to accept uh, this gracious gift by uh, Mr. Bustamante. Uh, we have any other discussion, any other comments? All those in favor, and by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. And, and thank you, Dr. Robles, for, <laughs> for uh, <laughs> helping move that conversation along. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. But uh, uh, next item on the agenda is uh, resolutions for consideration. There are two. Uh, there is a resolution authorizing an amendment to the resolution authorizing. Uh, Southmost Junior 
College District Student Union Building Fees Revenue Refunding Bonds, Series 2005. Uh, Dr. Moore. Say that three times real fast. <laughs> it's not happy hour. We, uh, 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 this is simply a, a correction. Uh, the um, uh, legal counsel for, uh, the, uh, for our bonds has recommended this change. When they submitted this to us, uh, they were using a, a format different than we use on our other bonding um, uh, resolutions. It simply means that uh, the uh, paying agent cannot withdraw funds from our account we must transfer our funds to them before they can pay the agent. So it just clarifies that language, and the language is in both resolutions and highlighted, and we would uh, recommend a, a passage of both revolution, uh, revolutions, resolutions. <laughs> the, uh, the, the second resolution addresses the Series 2000 bonds, yes. but it's identical in intent and identical in, in nature. So yes. um, uh, any questions? If not, uh, we'd ask for a motion to adopt the resolutions as presented. So moved. A motion by Mr. Esparza. Second. Second, uh, Dr. Robles. All those in favor, and by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is the bond projects, uh, consideration and possible action. So we do have reports, and uh, um, uh, Veronica Mendes will introduce this item. Thank you, Mr. Campirano. The bond update will consist of two items, the selection of the contractor for all the projects and the schematic design progress update. By considering the contractor selection tonight, the board will make an extraordinary stride in maintaining the bond projects on schedule. Let me set this up. Like pieces of a puzzle that are placed together to complete a picture, in order to get a project off the ground, we must have all the pieces together. We hire the project management firms of Barros and Associates, develop facilities programs, hired architects for each project, and tonight we complete the picture with the contractor selection. The pieces of a puzzle are coming together. The contractor selection process began with planning and strategy to maximize resources and the recommendation was made to group the projects in terms of the location to take advantage of economies of scale that could be achieved by reducing mobilization and overhead costs, among others. The projects were combined into three groups for contractor selection, and those were shown in the previous slide. The contractor selection process consists of three-part process. Requests for qualifications were issued, and seven firms responded to that call. Uh, different firms responded for each one of the groups. An evaluation committee was formed to shortlist those firms that had responded and then invite them to uh, respond to a proposal which included pricing information. After that, the interviews were conducted with each one of the shortlisted firms. Participation was key during the interview step. Members of the Board One Advisory Committees were invited to participate, as well as the various campus councils. The list of the firms that were uh, shortlisted is on the screen for each one of the groups. During the interviews, each company had a chance to present their qualifications, present members and percent members of the proposed team. Committees learn about the trends in the construction industry, as well as the abilities of each firm to manage the project. After each presentation, the committees reviewed the pricing information and deliberated to formulate a recommendation. At each of the meetings, the discussion was valuable. Our community members, members of the executive council, the faculty and students understood the importance of the decision and struggled to, for to formulate a recommendation of one firm and it's told to choose only one from a pool of qualified firms. I will ask now uh, Mr. Oliveira and Mr. Esparza to give the report of the meeting and to present the recommendation. We will make the motion of the recommendation until all the reports have been given. Mr. Oliveira. Thank, thank you, Veronica. Uh, I guess I'm gonna report on groups uh, A and B as they overlap with the committee that, uh, that I was uh, serving on. 
on Tuesday, May 16th, four bond advisory committees met uh, to interview the different contractors. And as you can see from the, the photo up there, it was well attended. We had uh, uh, not only members of uh, faculty, staff, uh, administration, but also uh, valuable uh, community input as well. And, and uh, uh, there was, I'll, I will tell you, for those of you who weren't there, there was some spirited discussion uh, held. And, and all the proposals were uh, uh, were excellent. I mean, we got some great presentations, and, and it, it made our, our, our job real difficult. But uh, at the same time, it's, it, it's a great process. And having been on this board since 1994 and seeing how we've evolved and, and doing some of this, I'm real proud that, uh, of the way we, we uh, uh, I think, conduct this process. It's a very fair one, and it's a very thorough one. And uh, I think everybody's goal is, in the end, is to get the the best you know contractor for for uh, each of these projects that we want to do and so uh, uh, it was uh, was well attended and the, the, the discussion I think was was very helpful uh, Skanska and uh, well let me tell you besides the community members of the, the board members that attended included uh, Chester Gonzalez and Rosemary uh, Breedlove uh, uh, for the classroom and biomedical projects Skanska and Spog uh, Sp uh, last night, I'm a little behind, they presented their qualifications and their proposed team members and uh, we, uh, uh, we did have a lot of discussion and it went back and forth, but in the end, Skanska USA was identified uh, by the committee as the best value respondent for the institution and uh, I think there was a number of different Factors, they, you know, we, they, they've done work for us before, and that, that was important. But I think also, I think that what impressed most of the committee members and impressed me as well is that it's a you know very uh, different environment now in the construction industry with uh, uh, Hurricane Katrina and Rita. You know, the price of, uh, of, of all the different materials is, is, has gone up incredibly. Concrete is just out of sight now, and, and these folks. Uh, there just seemed to be a head, a little bit ahead of everybody else in preparing for, uh, I guess, the, those unexpected contingencies that had the rising cost of materials. And I, I think that uh, was was an important factor, as well as, you know, just uh, their past work was outstanding. Uh, it was a tough decision, but in the end, I think everybody, uh, it was one that, that, that the majority of the committee, you know, certainly agreed with. Thank you. Mr. Spotson. The ITEC Bond Board Advisory Committee met on June 6th, uh, and we interviewed four contractors for this project. Uh, the firms were the Lott Brothers, J.E. Dunn, Terry Ray uh, Partnership, Skankska, and Spoglass. And while I didn't get to participate in the other uh, group's interviews, uh, I'll say that our, it sounds like the, our uh, interview process was much like uh, the interview process for the other groups. And for me, this was my first experience at, at uh, going through this process. And, and I must say it was, it was educational to say the least. Um, the, the broadest group was, was very prepared. Veronica, you were very prepared with, with your presentations and, and all the questions that needed answered. And there were some very good questions that were answered and deliberated upon. Uh, we had the answers to, and that, that helped make our, our deliberations that much more thoughtful and, 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 and deliberate. Uh, but it, it was a difficult decision, and that w it, 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 um, it was th difficult because we had four very qualified firms and and uh, they all did a very good job at bringing out the best of their trades and, and in the end uh, spa glass was recommended by the by the uh, committee as the best value respondent thank you um, i would like to request uh, a motion to select skanska usa for group a and b and uh, spa glass for group c and authorize the assistant BP for construction to negotiate and execute contracts with each firm. I'll make that motion. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second for selection of Skanska for Group A and B, uh, and selection of Spa Glass for the ITEC uh, project. So, any other discussion? Not all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. I, all those opposed, nay. Um, one is that the the work of the committees and all that was involved, but I, I think this again is the uh, 
the work of the trustees and want to certainly compliment each and every one of you. Uh, David did not miss any of the meetings, uh, as was mentioned. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Gonzalez attended all but one, and he could not attend that one due to a work-related uh, issue. And uh, Mr. Esparza and Mrs. Breedlove were present at all the respective committee meetings for, for the, the iTech project. So uh, it does take a lot of work. It does take a lot of energy. But you begin to see that uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of activity around here in the next uh, four years. So uh, that's pretty exciting. And uh, 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 stay tuned because uh, this is where we begin to uh, really ratchet up these projects. I think the first groundbreaking is scheduled in August. So now all of the projects are scheduled to, to move along. Uh, Veronica. Thank you, sir. And on that progress, the schematic design uh, continues. We continue to make progress and, and on site development and elevation studies for each project. While developing the site plans for the projects in the professional zone, we discovered some disadvantages of placing the Chalkin Center in the proposed location. If you recall, the early childhood center uh, was uh, between the thermal plant and the new small classroom building site. The site constrained the center in terms of drop-off and playground size. The scale of the building around there was also considered as a detraction to the possibilities of the one-story facility. The project management team searched for another possible location. The peninsula has been slated for the master plan for housing development and future married housing. Therefore, the site is appropriate. We uh, propose that the Placita, the newly acquired Placita site for the new location of the, uh, the child care center. The one and a half acre site is of office, a lovely setting on the Resaca and the pictures pass on by. I'm sorry about that. I will show them again. The uh, future pedestrian bridge connecting the peninsula and housing from the campus will also provide the pedestrian connections to that site. The architects as well as the campus advisory committees are, are very excited and supportive of the new site. ITEC schematic designs are also under development, and we anticipate a more detailed progress to a report to be made to the board at the August board meeting. That concludes my report. If there's any I guess questions. I one question on the child care center, yes, sir. Uh, the relocation, then we would require demolition of the existing structures. That is correct, as well as uh, an environmental assessment and archaeological assessment as well. Will that demolition be also part of the Skanska? Uh, responsibility on the contract. Yes, sir. That is one of the advantages having them that selected. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next item on the agenda is the construction report. Dr. Moore. Uh, we have uh, several projects ongoing uh, at the institution. Uh, one is a chill water line replacement. We have a bottleneck in our chill water system where we have a large pipe, a little pipe, and another large pipe. And we're replace replacing the little pipe so that we have enough flow to the other end of campus to service new facilities that might uh, well, not that might, that are going to be built on the other end of campus. We also have in our plans for the budget next year uh, a replacement for one of our chillers, uh, moving from a 250-ton to a 1,000-ton uh, chiller. Uh, that'll increase efficiencies and also provide us with redundancy and capacity. We are also uh, renovating a portion of Rustaburg to move the print shop from its present location to a more suitable location so that we can then move uh, some of our art folks that are now in the what we call the art building, uh, the old commissary, move them down with the rest of, of, of the art function that we have down there in Rustaburg, and they will go into where the print shop vacated. Uh, other uh, activities that are going on that you've heard a little bit about, uh, but that we don't have photos for because we haven't started the actual construction yet, and that is the uh, well, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. The iTech thermal plant, we do have photos for. You recall that we're replacing the uh, old, 30-year-old chillers in that thermal plant at iTech. These will be, uh, the new chillers will function and have capacity for about five to 600,000 square feet. So anything we do over there in renovating and changing, we will be able to use these efficient, new efficient chillers 
to cool our new and wonderfully improved iTech Center that's going to be just amazing when we uh, get through some of the schematic design. Also, as I mentioned, we have other projects ongoing. Uh, uh, just uh, yesterday we got sort of a go-ahead, uh, an important step to get the final uh, design drawings for a new pedestrian bridge. Similar to the pedestrian bridge we have between the student union and the education building complex, this new bridge will be right outside our door here, leading from uh, where Mary Rose Cardinal South is, just across to where we now have housing, it's going to be a wonderful uh, addition and really bring our campus together, housing and, and the, the campus so that students don't have to walk all the way around the, the corner to get there. Along with that project, uh, College Park is moving ahead rapidly now and that will be coordinated with that bridge construction so that we start here and we get all of that finished at the same time, then move to College Park, which also affects uh, the area around education business complex. And finally, we're going to do some changes in our Paseo walkway in front of Mary Rose Cardinal South so that we connect up with the bridge and lead uh, students and, and pedestrians across the bridge to our Pase main Paseo and also into Mary Rose uh, Cardinal South. Some other things that are going on, uh, big projects, we have a, a uh, student, uh, the Leitner Center, we're renovating for, for advising. With the new advising fees, we're hiring 10 additional new advisors that begin work shortly. Uh, we need a place for them. We're working on the student, Leitner Student Center to get that ready. It won't be ready when they arrive. And so what we're doing is we're going to put those new advisors in the uh, old Pan Am building, the education building right next to the water tower. It's vacant right now. We'll have room for them there. When they move out into the Leitner Center, we will then move security, who's very crowded right now and, ha and is in a cramped space in cavalry. We'll move them to the education, the old Pan Am Education Building, so that they have sufficient space and the kind of space they need to provide uh, efficient security operations. And it'll be central to the campus as well. So those are some of the things that are going on. Uh, we have a lot more things going on, smaller projects, but that gives you a brief uh, update on some of the some of the items that are ongoing right now. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, be glad to answer. Thank you, Dr. Moore, for a very informative report. Um, our next is our president's report. And uh, I'd like to just a couple of items first by welcome doc welcoming Dr. Moore back um, for this interim appointment. Um, we, we recycle uh, lots of things on this campus, <laughs> but only those that, that really work well for the first time and uh, so he has very graciously accepted the interim position and and as you notice we've not missed a step in this transition we're very very grateful for for that um we um uh dr moore this summer before he um uh, came back to the light um he um he had a, an occasion to be invited back to ireland where he had done some work previously, as you know, and spent the part of the summer assisting in the preparation of the um, uh, master plan, again, for the National College of Ireland, and, uh, and worked with them in updating their five-year strategic plan. Uh, we are very glad he was able to do that for the uh, National College of Ireland. We are very glad he is back home uh, at, at uh, his other university. Dr. Tony Savaleta has just returned from delivering the commencement address uh, in, um, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, at the Universidad Interamericana de Puerto Rico Escuela de Optometría. And we are very proud of, of that invitation and I'm sure of that presentation that was titled The Importance of Cultural Competencies in the Delivery of Healthcare in the 21st Century. And no one could have been selected better than, than our own. And that, that speaks well of our university as well as of Dr. Savalita. So congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, tell me. On, uh, on May 12th, there was another honor to, uh, to one of our own, and that was to Dr. Elsa Cardenas Hagen. As you know, she is one of the students who has made it, uh, who has received her doctorate through our 
collaborative doctoral program with the University of Houston. She was invited back to the University of Houston to receive their 2006 Distinguished Alumnus Award from the Curriculum and Instruction Program in the College of Education. Uh, Cardenas um, is the first student from the Cooperative Doctoral Program to receive the Distinguished Alumnus Award. Dr. Howard Jones, the coordinator of the doctoral program um, between UTB, TSC, and the University of Houston, and a professor emeritus made the presentation. And in that presentation, he said that Dr. Hagen had indeed made us very proud and recognized her as uh, an expert and a premier authority in the United States in the area of, uh, of, uh, of uh, oracy and literacy. Uh, she has, uh, she's a bilingual speech language pathologist, a certified academic language therapist, and is director of the Valley Speech, Language, and Learning Institute of Brownsville. Uh, as, as you know, I have announced that we have formed the Borderplex Health Council, and that, and that is made up of the two medical schools in the Valley and of UT Pan America, UT Brownsville, and that I have the honor of serving in the, as the first chair of that council, made up of the four presidents. Uh, we have a new partnership that we have initiated. The council will promote multi-institutional collaboration among all of the UT institutions on the Texas-Mexico border. And, and this year we have voted to invest $1 million in projects targeting diabetes, obesity, and the nursing shortage. We have had a, um, a, um, a, a, a matching amount um, almost to the total, uh, but, but soon to come, we hope, the rest of it from the University of Texas system. So it is our intent to collaborate one university, one medical school on important programs with regards to the nursing shortage and, and the issue of diabetes, di uh, diabetes. Um, the um, uh, um, chess team has just returned. Uh, we have had two members of our chess team that have just returned from the Chess Olympiad in Italy. Uh, they were representing their own countries, as is the custom when you go to this Chess Olympiad. And so Timur uh, Garib was uh, representing Uzbekistan, and Nelly Estrada was representing Mexico. And they came back with some very impressive results. The Chess Olympiad is a comparable, if you think about it in terms of the sports world, to the Wimbledon as a uh, tennis uh, championship or the World Cup of soccer that we're all familiar with right now. Um, uh, Timur Garib represented his home country, as I said. And uh, in the men's section, Uz uh, Uzbekistan, represented by Timur, finished 13th out of 148 teams. A grieve is a, uh, uh, Timur Grieve is a grand master, and he finished with eight points in 11 games. There were 250 grand masters in this section. Timur's rating performance was 2,716, which is almost 200 points higher than his actual rating of 2,522. And what happens is that the, the, the higher ranked players you play and win with, that affects your own ranking. And so he was able to increase his ranking by 200 points because of the caliber of the competition at this uh, conference. Uh, Nelly Estrada also did very, very well. Uh, and um, I, I don't see her exact uh, uh, rating here, but, uh, but it was her first attempt, and I'm sure that, that she was able to move uh, forward very, very quickly. There are, there, of all the grand, of all the world, chess in the ch uh, tournament, uh, in the, uh, you know, of all the chess players in the world. Only 1,000 are grand masters, just to give you an idea. So you're in, in, uh, in very rarefied air when you're in that group. Uh, we will have a summer concert for the Mariachi Scorpion uh, here, and it is the university's all-female group called the Mariachi, uh, Mariachi Luna Azteca. And they will present a concert called Summer Fiesta with Escorpion on Friday, June the 30th at 7.30 in the lecture hall of SETI. The students are trying to raise funds to fund and finance their trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico to attend the Mariachi Spectacular Conference in July. The groundbreaking that Mr. Campirano mentioned a little bit earlier for the Rec Center 
now officially we're calling it the REC, R-E-K, for Recreation, Education, and Kinesiology. So we'll meet you at the REC uh, is uh, going to be a common phrase, we hope, on this campus someday. And it is on Tuesday, August the 22nd at 10 a.m. Our anniversary year is, is shortly upon us. September 1st of this year marks our 15th year since we began operating as UT Brownsville, uh, was established as an autonomous university in the UT system, and then the partnership, of course, with Texas Southwest College began that year. So we'll be keeping you up to date on, on uh, upcoming um, uh, plans. It is also. Will we have any quinceañera then? I would have. We are, as already. a matter of fact, <laughs> we'll be making an announcement about the quinceañera celebration uh, that we'll be having. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll be asking for sponsors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is there. Excuse me, Dr. Garcia, you spoke at Brown. I and did. I have, could you just really, and you never toot your own horn. We're very proud of you for having spoken and being the speaker yeah. at their commencement. How was it? Can you give us a short version? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, was it the, sunny? Was it nice? Was it, you know, was it just Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. It was a great honor. Um, I was uh, I was the speaker at the baccalaureate service, and um, and it was a speech given in the it is their tradition to meet in the largest the place that was the largest place in town when they got started over 350 years ago. The school was formed before Jamestown. Before Jamestown, so if you hear about other settlements, they claim to have gone first. It was a very ecumenical service in which uh, there were a call to prayer uh, by over eight different uh, groups in different languages, everything from a Chinese dragon dance to an African drum beat to an Episcopalian um, a Jewish rabbi and a Muslim and a Catholic and a Protestant and in their, their, uh, in their different languages. Um, so that was, that's kind of easy then to get up and give something spiritual at that point. Uh, it, it went very, very well. The, the most impressive part about the experience um, were the other uh, honorees, including Paul Volcker, as we all know, with the Federal Reserve, uh, uh, Catherine Jameson, uh, who's a famous author and psychologist, the finance minister of Nigeria, who is trying to do some great things in Nigeria, um, and, and some other folks that all very uh, 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 folks who are very are equally impressive. The person who received the highest honor that weekend was uh, Senator um, Pell, Claiborne Pell. You know, we talk about the Pell grants. Senator Claiborne Pell uh, attended the commencement in a wheelchair, and he, he is the longest serving senator for the state of Rhode Island. And uh, it was under his um, leadership that the United States established Pell Grants for opening the doors of access uh, for higher education. Rhode Island and Brown University have their roots in, um, in providing a liberal arts education, uh, and liberal in the ecumenical sense of the word, and it was formed as a state to to um, uh, guarantee those freedoms of religion, especially for folks. It is woven into every ceremony of their commencement and their baccalaureate services. And so um, it was a very impressive few days. People were very gracious. And, um, and I told a few stories along the way that, that I hope will stay uh, imprinted in folks' mind. They'll remember Brownsville, Texas, and uh, and our work here. But thank you for asking. I enjoyed it. It was very nice. And you received an honorary doctorate as well? As I, I did. I, I did. I, it is, uh, I received an honorary doctorate. They, had, uh, uh, they have a school of medicine there. They have a school of law. And uh, I received an honorary doctorate of humane letters. Great. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I, 
I think, you know, Chester has said this before, but, you know, your reports are always such a, a great way to end our business on such a positive note because there's so many things that are just those little things that we don't hear about every day, the successes, the triumphs, the battles that, you know, are fought on campus every day. And the recognitions that unless you tell us or, 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 or let the community know, they would simply uh, would be kept to the campus community and not to our community as a whole. So that, that, that's great. Thank you. Uh, and I have one question. The finance minister in Nigeria, he's not the one that sends me all those emails about wanting my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> <Same way. laughs> no. Different one? Okay. She. Okay, she. <laughs> For <Okay>. starters. <laughs> She is so, quite a powerful lady. Okay. Well, I wanted to make sure. <laughs> and, uh, and and I mean has been uh, has been threatened, uh, and uh, and her family has too for the actions that she is uh, is taking and has, lives to tell. So, okay. thank you for your report. Yes, sir. Um, proposed meeting dates for this board. There will not be a board meeting in July. Uh, August we do have a workshop. Uh, meeting scheduled for August the 17th. Uh, we have a meeting in September scheduled for Thursday the 14th. And the October schedule will be Thursday, October the 26th. Uh, I hope that uh, those uh, dates are all satisfactory for all the board members. Uh, is there any announcements? If not, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Hello, Dr. Robles, Mr. Oreda. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all very much.